each and every day. Hi, Bishop McLaughlin here, and we're back for a week in review. Uh, this past week was exciting here at the Potter's House. I literally preached myself happy. And God is speaking to us here at the Potter's House, and hopefully he's speaking to you through this media form right now. Hopefully you're watching this, and this word is what you need. Wednesday night, the Lord asked us from Revelation chapter 3, I wish that you were either hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. So I asked the question to the congregation, please, hot or cold, just be hot or cold, be one or the other. Because when you're lukewarm, literally, what you are is you're kind of a, a, a professing Christian. One of those people who are what the Bible calls in the New Living Translation a so-called Christian. You have all the trimmings, you look good, you're doing all the right things, but your heart is far from God. And Jesus was talking to the church at Laodicea, and in Laodicea they had these hot springs. And the water from the hot springs was either very good hot or very good cold. But if it was lukewarm, it left kind of a putrid taste, a taste, a bad taste, a nauseating taste in the mouth of those that drink it. And Jesus used that analogy because they would understand it. And there are many of us, uh, God is tolerating us at best. But it's now time to either be hot or cold. It's time to stand up and proclaim your faith in God and to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So Jesus is saying this. He would rather you say you're not saved and live like it. Instead of professing to be saved and doing whatever the hell you want to do. So what he's actually saying, bottom line is, is don't tell folk you're going to heaven when you're living like hell. And then so uh, that, that's what I'm talking about. I, I'm talking about people who are saying they're going to heaven, but they're living like hell. Or people who are professing one thing, but doing another. He said that's a lukewarm person. But the person that's cold, they'll tell you straight up, I ain't trying to live for God. I ain't studying you. I ain't worried about it. We don't mess with them. They need the gospel. We, gonna, we know where they stand. We just don't know where you stand because you got all the trimmings of religion. Because you're doing everything that everybody else is doing but you're doing it with the wrong motive and you're doing it half-hearted and you're doing it like you don't really believe that there is a God. You're doing it like God will accept anything or take anything from you. Y'all not help me, but I'm going to preach myself happy. That's why you can rob him. That's why you can tip him. That's why you can come in and out of his presence and leave the same way you were before you came. There's no way you can spend time with a holy God and leave his presence unholy. So then, saints of God, don't play with it. Don't talk about heaven on your way to hell. And everybody talking about heaven, of course, ain't going there. But you have an opportunity. You have a chance to get it right. Because even to those lukewarm Christians, he said, Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. And if any man shall hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in and sup with them and them with me. He wants to live with you eternally. He wants to sup and dine with you and commune with you. Open up your heart. Make room for Jesus. Let him into those areas that have been stale and stagnant and lukewarm and watch he set you on fire. He wants you blazing. All right? That's Wednesday night. On Friday night, God really spoke because I'm going to tell you right now, there's a whole bunch of haters out there. And so I preached for the topic, thank God for the haters. Everybody that's anointed of God, called of God, chosen of God, favored of God, are going to have people who just hate them for no cause. Remember, the Bible said they hated Jesus, and they'll hate you. But haters are everywhere. The story was Joseph. Joseph was chosen by his father, favored by him, loved above all the rest of the brother. And his daddy gave him a coat of many colors, a coat that the other brothers got jealous of. It was Joseph's coat. Joseph didn't do anything to get that coat. The father just gave it to him. And them brothers, man, did whatever they could to try to just wipe him, slap out. Hated on his brother when his father loved him. And that was one of the major points of the message. How in the world can the father love you and your brothers hate you? Think about that. If the father loves you, shouldn't everybody else love you? If the father's favored you, shouldn't everybody else celebrate you? But Joseph was favored by his father and his brothers. Uh, they threw him in a pit, they sold him in slavery, they tried to forget about him, they took the coat of colors, dipped it in animal blood, brought it back to the father, lied to everybody, said he was dead. And then one day, they had to stand before their brother. Hey, them haters that are hating on you, 
one day they're going to have to confront you. If it's not now, then later. The Bible said he's going to make our enemies our footstool. So he'll prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemy. Some folk just won't like it. They will misinterpret everything about you. I'm preaching. Nothing you do will be right, good, or worth anything as far as they're concerned. How would you get green-eyed, jealous, or envious about what somebody else driving, what somebody else wearing, what somebody else living? How come you're going to get negative because you pull up in front of somebody else's house and it's twice as big as your house and now you... You so favor of the Lord that folk can't stand you. What haters don't understand is this. The coat is what they see. But the coat simply represents what we really have. Still don't get it. What we really have is faith. They see the stuff. But the stuff is what favor will get you. If they want to know how you got what you got, you didn't get it by hook or cook by your education. You didn't get it by making a smart investment. You got it by faith. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Your plans were your plan, but God had a bigger plan. And because I went through what I went through, God is blessing everything and everybody around. This lesson on haters tonight, when I'm done with it, you ought to be able to pick up a hater at 100 yards. When I get through tonight, you ought to be able to go home and say, that's a hater, 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 that's a hater later. <laughs> you ought to be able to say, hey, look at here. And then remember now, don't give your haters credit. Don't give them credit. Send them a note. Feed your enemies. Clothe them. Do good to them. Pray for them. Oh, come on. Bring them close to you. Get your enemies close to you because he's going to make your enemies your footstool. Get them close to you. He says he's going to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Get them close to you. Y'all not helping me here. God will take care of you in the presence of so you don't have to worry about the haters. You don't have to worry about your enemies. Feed them, clothe them, pray for them, do good to them. Don't fight evil with evil. Don't fight fire with fire. Let God have his way. Thank God for the haters. Matter of fact, buy them a Hallmark card. Send it to them because if some folk weren't hating on you like they're hating on you, you wouldn't be praying like you're praying. You wouldn't be worshiping like you're worshiping. You wouldn't be shouting like you're shouting. You wouldn't be giving like you're giving. But because they're hating on you, You've drawn closer to God. So thank God for the haters. The haters will push you towards your destiny and the haters will make you accomplish what God has purposed for you. All right, so let's thank God for the haters.